In this video, we're going to continue discussing the biomechanics of the temporomandibular joint by looking specifically at which muscles are involved in mouth opening and with mouth closing. And we're going to look even beyond the four major muscles of mastication by looking at the hyoid muscles as well. So we'll start by looking at mouth opening. And the major osteokinematic movement of mouth opening is mandibular depression. And overall, mouth opening can be divided into an early and late phase, as we discussed in the previous video. The early phase consists mainly of bilateral downward mandibular rotation, and the rotation mainly occurs at the mandibular condyles. And the late phase consists mostly of bilateral anterior condylar translation. And not only is there anterior translation, there's also a little bit of inferior, but it's mostly anterior translation. Now the downward mandibular rotation seen in the early phase is controlled mainly by the lateral pterygoid inferior head. So up here is the superior head, and this one right here where my mouse is, is the inferior head. And you'll notice that it inserts on the mandibular condyle itself. So this muscle is going to be able to exert a direct pull on the mandibular condyle, and that's what leads to this anterior roll of the condyle and this overall downward rotation of the mandible. But then if we look at this anterior condylar translation that occurs in the late phase of mouth opening, this is controlled mainly by the lateral pterygoid superior head. So sure, the superior head right here does have some attachment on the mandibular condyle, so it's going to be able to participate a little bit in the downward mandibular rotation in the early phase. But notice that a large insertion here of the superior head is on the articular disc. So remember, in the late phase of mouth opening, we get an anterior slide of that mandibular condyle. And we also get movement of the articular disc. We put tension on the articular disc. And it's actually the superior head of lateral pterygoid, which inserts right here, that's actually putting that tension on the disc. Remember, it's pulling this way, towards the right on this picture. And so by putting tension on that disc, especially as we get near full mouth opening, we get the intermediate region of the disc sliding between the condyle and the articular eminence right here. And then also it puts tension on the retrodiscal tissue. The whole point here is during the late phase, we have to get that tension on the articular disc. And by putting the tension on the articular disc, it moves it anteriorly and allows for the slide of this mandibular condyle anteriorly. So you wouldn't be able to slide this anteriorly unless you put tension on the articular disc. And so that lateral pterygoid superior head is extremely important for that tension on the disc. Okay. Now during mouth opening, the hyoid bone also moves. So the hyoid bone is going to be pulled both posteriorly and inferiorly to clear it out of the way of the mandible as it depresses maximally. So if the hyoid bone just stayed right here, as the mandible goes down and down and down, it would eventually crash into the hyoid. And we don't want that, so we got to get the hyoid bone out of the way. And there's two sets of muscles that are involved in this, and those are the suprahyoids and the infrahyoids. You can see the line of pull of the suprahyoids right here. They're pulling posteriorly, but also superiorly. Down here are the infrahyoids, and they're exerting a pull on the hyoid bone inferiorly. Now, if we just think about anterior versus posterior pull on the hyoid bone, well, there's no muscles that pull it anteriorly, but the suprahyoids do pull it posteriorly. So between the two, posterior is going to win out there. But then if we look at superior versus inferior, the suprahyoids pull it superior, and the infrahyoids pull it inferior. But it turns out that the inferior pull here is stronger than the superior pull. And so the net pull on the hyoid is posterior and inferior. And it turns out that this inferior shift of the hyoid bone with mouth opening is one of the important factors in obtaining maximal mouth opening. If you can't move the hyoid out of the way, then the mandible cannot depress maximally. Okay? So that's very important to understand. Now, mandibular elevation is the major osteokinematic movement of mouth closing. And mouth closing, recall, is an exact reversal of mouth opening. So the early phase of closing is going to involve bilateral posterior condylar translation with a little bit of superior translation. And the late phase of mouth closing will involve bilateral upward 
condylar or upward mandibular rotation. Now remember that out of the four major mastication muscles, the only one of them that's involved in mandibular depression is the lateral pterygoids, as we discussed, and the superior and inferior heads each have slightly different functions. But when it comes to mandibular elevation, it's going to require the combined action of all three of the other muscles. And those are going to be the temporalis, the masseter, and the medial pterygoids. Okay? Now down here where I list elevation and retraction, the elevation I'm talking about is the superior movement of the mandible with mouth closing. The retraction is really the posterior movement of the mandible with mouth closing. And for that superior movement of the mandible, this will involve all three of these muscles, temporalis, masseter, and medial pterygoids, the combined action of all of them. And really with the temporalis for elevation, it's mainly the anterior fibers of the temporalis. But then when we talk about the posterior movement of the mandible during mouth closing, the retraction, this is going to involve the posterior fibers of temporalis only, not the masseter, not the medial pterygoids, and not the anterior fibers of temporalis. It's only the posterior fibers of temporalis. And then there's two other things that happen during mouth closing. Number one is a relaxation of the suprahyoids and infrahyoids. Remember, they contract during mouth opening to get the hyoid bone out of the way of the depressing mandible. And so their net pull on the hyoid is posterior and inferior. And so it moves in that direction to get out of the way. But during mouth closing, if these muscles relax, then the hyoid is going to be able to move back to its original position, and it'll essentially move in the opposite directions. So instead of posterior and inferior, it'll move anterior and superior to get back to its original spot. And then the final thing that occurs during mouth closing has to do with this tension that's on the articular disc. So recall that during the late phase of mouth opening, the lateral pterygoid superior head puts tension on the articular disc. We can think of the articular disc like a rubber band. If you pull on the rubber band and put tension on it, you build up elastic energy within the rubber band. So that way when you let go of one end, it snaps back to its original position due to the conversion of elastic energy into kinetic energy. The articular disc functions very similarly. So when that mouth is open, we have a lot of tension built up in the articular disc. That tension is stored as elastic energy. So when we eventually need to close the mouth, yes, we have muscles to help close the mouth, like masseter, medial pterygoids, temporalis, but we also have that elastic energy that's stored in the disc. And so when we finally close, we allow that elastic energy to be converted to kinetic energy, which pulls back to its original position and helps to elevate the mandible back up. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.